A wonderful day to you and it's time for another Rift Guides Wild Rift video and today is a tier list day for the high elo. But before we hop into that video, let's talk about our question of the day. How often do you pan your camera? With that, it's about just getting the most information possible so you know what's going on and can alter the things you want to do. Maybe you want to go for a play on the other side of the map, maybe you want to farm, maybe you want to go for platings, it's all based on information. You need to get information to be the best player possible. First on the list comes the Baron lane and here we have Yon. We all love and hate this champion because whenever he tags you, you basically start yelling in real life and then you just, you know, you just can't deal with it anymore, it's just so painful. But Yon in the top lane, or rather the Baron lane, is a very big force to reckon with, and here's why. The trading pattern, or rather the laning phase of Yon, is rather potent. You'll abuse the enemy laner with your auto attack and first ability reset and stack your lethal tempo super fast. But you need to be very much afraid of champions that can outscale you very easily, such as Jax. Especially if the enemy champions have proactive junglers such as Lee Sin, things get really dicey very fast. But in the scaling department, especially the teamfight department, your champion is absolutely nuts. All you have to do is use your third ability into your ultimate ability and you literally want to half the enemy roster without even trying. It's really dumb. But you have to be very much aware of what you can do with this champion. Laning wise, you want to abuse the enemy and get your lead going, most of the time with a blade of the Rune King. You want this item because this item is absolutely broken. But the one and only exception where you would go Solar Charge Blade is a full squishy enemy team where you want to hit your crit spike even faster. And if there's something that I love the most about Yon in the Baron lane or generally as a champion is you can use camps to maneuver around the map super fast. Let's say you kill the Grom or the Krug camp and have your third charge of your first ability ready. You can use your third ability to hop over the wall, use your first ability's third charge to go over another wall and then gank another lane from your lane and then just snap back without any worry in the world about your safety. It's really dumb, really fun and absolutely broken. Young players do this all the time because it's so powerful and impactful at the same time. And this is our full tier list for the Baron lane. Next on the list we have the jungle roll and we have the lovely kitty cat Rengar. What makes Rengar so powerful? Rengar is a very powerful full clear champion that can instantly clear his jungle without any problem or dropping reasonably low. On the other hand, Rengar can also go for early skirmishes by just abusing brushes on the map and the early game power with the its auto attack resets on his first ability and the healing from his second ability. That alone makes it very difficult for any champion to compete in direct power, because he will just kill you. But as the game goes on, you have to think about multiple things. If you want to go for a coin flop play, you might get punished and fall off a cliff. But if you want to go for the consistent approach, as in the full clear, once you do the full clear and hit level 5 later on, you can go for a consistent play which will most of the time work out because of how your champion functions. Also, your champion has the ability to just go into side lanes and push them down because you take towers in an instant. In addition to this, you also take down Baron Nasha alone by the way once you hit free items with boots. With Navori Quick Blades, Solari Charge Blade and a Bloodthirster, you have no problem taking down Baron Nash. You'll literally melt it without losing HP because you can use your power abilities to just heal up and take it down. It becomes so powerful that if the enemy makes a single mistake on the map, you'll just take it away, similar to what you can do on side lanes if the enemy champions are on the other side of the map. So, whatever happens, if you pay close attention to your surroundings, you'll always have an available play because you don't need to fight with your team, which is the beauty about Rengar. You have so much individual power and independence, apart from the very early game where you might get messed up if your team is a little bunch of trolls, but that's, that literally goes for everything you do and everything you play. But with having this independence, you can take over most of your games and win for free. And this is our full tier list for the jungle roll. Next up on this list comes Zoe. 
Zoe has been released and Zoe is broken. Yes, that is absolutely true. But Zoe is a champion that isn't that easy to play. You need to think about a lot of things when you play Zoe and what you want to do in the near future because it really matters. A lot of champions can be just played intuitively just running into people. But Zoe is a different breed when it comes to that. Just thinking about where the enemy is going to move, how to catch them off guard and using terrain as your advantage is a very big plus for Zoe. Also worthy of note is that you have to weave auto attacks in between your spells to maximize damage. Not only that, using summoner spells or picking up specific summoner spells from the floor and using them instantly is something you also have to get used to and every situation can be impacted by the things on the floor or the enemy using their summoner spells. It's really such a high skill ceiling that if you master it, you will literally stump most of the opposition players. For laning, for example, you start with your first ability quite normal, and you can even level your second ability on level 2 to go for a cheeky kill if you've already dealt damage earlier. Because all you have to do is press your ignite on the enemy champion, then those little bonus bubbles from your second ability appear, which will deal bonus damage to the enemy champion, and if they flash away, you can flash after them, you can pick up their flash and have even more of those lovely little bubbles that deal damage to enemy champions. It's absolutely useless to flash away from his own, she will just get after you and kill you whatsoever, it's really annoying. And this is our full tier list for the mid lane. We all know AD carries and we all love and hate AD carries. But what about a champion that has absolutely ruined this role because it's so easy to pilot on a skillful perspective and yet so powerful in the current meta context? I'm talking about Tristana. Tristana is one of those set pieces you can almost always pick in solo queue and it gets really annoying because this champion has single-handedly in combination with Lulu inflated the dragon lane role. Everybody hates it because it's absolutely unskilled in most situations, but there are a few things you should or could know that will make you an even better player. What about using Tristana's spells properly? Tristana's bomb can be stacked by hitting spells on the enemy champion, which includes your second ability rocket jump and your ultimate ability. Combining this allows you to fast stack up your bomb and then blow the enemy into the next game. Also, utilizing your ultimate to knock an enemy champion into the entire enemy team to blow all of them up at the same time is very powerful. Generally also understanding how you can use the bomb on minions to deal a lot of burst damage by using the minion passive explosion from your third ability and the active bomb on it to just deal some cheeky cheeky poke damage. As for level 5, Tristana is one of those champions that will kill you on level 5. Unless you have exhaust, she will kill you. Even if you are on one item and she only have a, has a BF sword, she will absolutely murder you because she has so much bonus damage from spells compared to other AD carries. And if she hits you, you are going to go sky. And this is our full tier list for the AD carry role. Last but surely not the least, we have the support role and we have my favorite champion in the game, which I believe is the most broken champion in this game, without a doubt. It's Karma. Karma has been the absolute pinnacle of the support role when it comes to damage, impact and everything you want. And a lot of people still don't really understand how to pilot Karma. With the rise in bone plating, there's no more reason to start with your first ability on Karma. If you hit the enemy with bone plating up, your first burst will go into the entire bone plating and you will deal literally zero damage. So what's the point of this? So every single time in lane you have to proc the bone plating with an auto attack, which means you're in a position where you're very unlikely going to hit the enemy with your first ability because they'll probably hide behind minions. So what can you do about this? Maybe, just maybe start with your second ability. Force the enemy to split apart because otherwise they get rooted. And then with the help of your AD carry and your overall high damage from your auto attacks combining with the weakness mastery you have, 
you will chip the enemy and maybe even get them killed if they make a mistake because most of the time one enemy isolates in some kind of way that they cannot help each other and then two people are attacking one person and then you will just win for free. That is something I've done so many times and have so much success with because it's so unbelievably broken it's really annoying that people don't do it. Other than that, it's about the mantra usage. You need to be really, really, really aware of what you can do with your mantra. And most of the time, people just use their first ability or their shield randomly. I'll be honest. Most of the time, I use my second ability in an empowered form because it sets up a kill for free. Every single time I see two people and I have spells available, if I root them together, I'll most likely kill them because they can't escape. If I just want to poke, I just go for my first ability, and in like 1 out of 50 cases, or maybe even less often, I'll use my empowered third ability. Because that's how most of the time the games play out. The shielding usually doesn't do too much, because you'll decide a fight before anything happens anyway, because you have so much damage with the pen build. Don't go supportive items. And this is our full tier list for the support role. And that's it for today's video. Leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you liked the video and come back for more content because we'll have more for you soon. See you guys, take care.